Welcome to the Win All Day Every Day podcast presented by Prairie Hockey Academy, a podcast exploring relevant topics to help you navigate the high performance journey that you're all on. Uh, I am excited to be with you again tonight, Justin. It's uh, we're we're through the thick of the Christmas season, and yeah. there's lots of uh, you know the players have all just got back. You know they've had a three week break, and and now we're just getting ready to run through uh, the last part of the season and get ready for playoffs. So it's really exciting time of year right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. January, January's here. Christmas came and went. Uh, Happy New Year to you and everybody else again. And um, it'll be a uh, yeah, fun, fun second half. Yeah, I mean, last week we had um, Richard Husseini on uh, the podcast, and he provided a ton of information around. Um, you know, I, I don't want it just to be like that, just a, a, a podcast for men, but like he had a ton of stuff working around his podcast and his podcast launched last week and and Richard hopefully things keep rolling well for you but the information that he was providing was just really hitting home for me and a lot of listeners we've had some great feedback on it and and just a, a real challenge to us to, to really yeah. be able to step up yeah yeah I think if anyone hasn't listened yet I mean men behind sport was is Richard's company uh, he launched his own podcast last week as well and uh, just a great episode uh, yeah it hit home for sure and of course, back on the 19th, we had J.P. Nerbin, who is uh, our culture coach at PHA. Um, yeah. He's not just our culture coach. He, you know, just randomly on the side happens to work with the U.S. Olympic team and the PGA. And I mean, his his resume <laughs> is ridiculous. Yeah. We're just so glad that we get to have him with our student athletes. And and on the 19th, he, he launched his own book. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, it's his third book, actually. And so, I mean, the first two are great. This one's really good as well. It's called The Sport Parent Solution. And uh, it's just really, it's a challenge to coaches. It's a book written for coaches on how to uh, engage with parents and turn them into their greatest uh, asset and ally um, to cr- help build their culture on their team, not, um, not you know, inhibit it. Right? right. Yeah. And so I really encourage people to to get out there onto his website and, and you can find the links through our website to, to get a copy of his book. And um, you know, we, I think one of the differentiating, differentiating pieces for PHA, um, and I'm convinced of this more and more as I talk to other scouts and, you know, uh, the league we play in is just form a new board of governors and, and, uh, and in, sorry, an independent board of directors. And through that process, you know, we've had a chance to have some conversations and, and, and they ask, you know, what, what sets PHA apart? And I really think it's our, our deep investment into the culture and, and chasing and pursuing cultures of excellence. And, right. um, and JP helps establish that for us. And we've also got another individual on that uh, just came on staff with us this year. And it's our guest for today, Mr. Kevin Thiessen. And uh, Kevin, um, you know, he's, he's spent time uh, kicking the round ball uh, at different places around the world. And the, 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 the lovely game of soccer. The round football. The round football. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> um, he's, he's had a chance to, you know, go on some tours overseas and, and, and played some time in, in uh, Ireland. He's, he's, you know, done some, some good things in BC playing the game. He's pastored in Ireland, pastored in BC, pastored in Saskatchewan, um, was a dean of students at Briarcrest College, and, and now um, he's, he's on staff with us. And so we're yeah. glad to have him to help us on that daily walkthrough with our culture pieces. So... Kevin, welcome to the show. We're glad that you're on board with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, so not a pastor anymore, Kevin, at this point in time, but director of team development, right, is what yeah. we what we kind of titled it here with you uh, in your role. And um, thrilled to have you. I mean, you've been through the first semester into the second half of uh, your first year with the hockey season, I guess, right? You bet. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been awesome to be here. And there's always some now good banter about other than, you know, hockey talk. We get to <laughs> That's right. talk about soccer and my Crystal Palace team and, and how they're running through the mid part of the table over there in the EPL. And um, <laughs> I just, you know, I my friends are going to be like, be what the heck happened to you? Why are you talking about soccer? Uh, but I, I've, I've fallen in love with my Crystal Palace and uh, I think they're going to make a good run in the playoffs here. That's yeah. right. It's the beauty of the game. Like in the in the Premier League, especially you pick a team like Crystal Palace, they're just built for upsets and... And they're they're playing their role really well this year. They're they're losing a few that you'd expect, but they're getting some big wins over some big teams, and they're frustrating the top of the table. And that's a good thing to see. Yeah, keeps it interesting. Be the underdogs. Right? That's right. Are we, what are, we, are we talking about soccer? <laughs> 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 I think I tracked along better when we talked about the uh, you know Tour de France. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Well, we can we can easily switch gears over there, but they're right. they're in their off season right now. Those yeah. those dudes are uh, taking a, a break from their bikes and. Um, yeah, lots of actually that's a, someone that we got to get on. Uh, Allison Jackson, she won 
uh, the Perry Bay and, and uh, she was just out at Trinity Western last uh, two weeks ago and helped them raise three quarters of a million dollars for the athletic program, mm -hmm. uh, just telling her story through sport. And mm -hmm. uh, so we'll we'll make sure we get Allison on here in the next couple of weeks. I think that'd be a great uh, great opportunity for us to talk about continuation of female development in sports and whatnot. But Kevin, talk to us about what brings you to PHA and what, mm -hmm. what attracts you to the academy. Yeah, I think uh, Justin and I have known each other uh, for about 15 years. I ironically, I think, Barrett, you and I have known each other for probably over 20 years through Athletes in Action. Uh, I got my start in my early 20s with Athletes in Action uh, through the sport of soccer. I got a chance to go over to Ireland and Croatia and Germany. Um, sport was a part of my life growing up. That was my identity for sure. I think I went to provincials in eight different sports and I went to nationals in two. And so, so sport was my identity. And then to be introduced to something like Athletes in Action, uh, to be introduced to the, the thought that you can integrate your faith with your sport was huge. And so to go on these international tours, to see the unique platform that sport gives us, uh, to, to make new friends, to, to cross cultural boundaries, to cross, um, yeah, ethnic boundaries, socioeconomic boundaries, that was uh, an eye-opener for me. And I fell in love with it. And that actually was where I got my start. I joined Athletes in Action on staff in BC, uh, working on uh, college and university campuses and then leading some of their international soccer tours to different parts of the world. And, um, and then through that, uh, that actually opened the door into pastoral ministry. And so the pastoral ministry started in Ireland where... Uh, I'd been with Athletes in Action, soccer opened up all sorts of doors, but I recognized that if it's just about the athletes, then we're going in there, but we're going home eventually. And what about the people that are doing the long-term work on the ground? And so the opportunity to actually go and be a part of the follow-up and be a part of the long-term work uh, was an invitation I couldn't pass up. And so my, my new bride, Christy, and I, we, we moved over there in 2004, and that began that journey. Um, when we came back to Canada, I did my master's in leadership and management, and uh, that opened up a door then to go to Victoria, BC, where I was a pastor for 10 years. Um, that was then uh, an opportunity uh, arose to come back to Briarcrest. And Prairie Hockey had already started. I came on as the dean of students for all three schools, the high school, the college, and the seminary. And so I got to work closely with Justin and, and this new academy. Uh, to, to help iron out some of the, the, the kinks that comes with any new initiative uh, to improve the student development side and the student care uh, for their student athletes and uh, then to just improve the relationship between departments like student development that would oversee the dormitories and, and, the, and the care in the home sort of, sort of uh, aspect. And for me, when the Dean of Students role ended and Justin approached me about this opportunity to join PHA, the opportunity was now to put all of these experiences I've had over the last 27 years into one job description where I get to do some of the athletes in action stuff. I get to do some of the coaching and mentoring. I get to do some of the pastoral work on, on the sort of spiritual side and cultural side of the academy. And um, yeah, it, it, what, what started as a brainstorm uh, when I actually saw the job description laid out, I was just laughing because it was like, yeah, just handed to me like, here's my life in a job description. So that was yeah, a really cool thing to be able to, to get excited about coming alongside and now coming right within Prairie Hockey Academy and helping from within, not just from the outside. Yeah, and you, you touch on that piece of your identity having to sort of take a bit of a shift, right? 100%. As you identified that. And and now you're you're walking the hallways of the high school and of our, you know, hockey rink and high performance center and you're working with, you know, 13 to 18 year old young men. Mm -hmm. Do you see identity issues there? Oh, man, every day. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, one of the things I, I get to do, uh, just uh, the coaches give me space to, to come on the ice with the players and with the coaches. I try to get out with each team at least once a week, and it's a great opportunity to be in their environment and just to observe, to watch their body language, to see you know, who's engaged in practice, who's, who's having a hard week, uh, who's been checking out mentally, who's checked in, and then to be able to have those conversations in the hallways and in the dorm uh, to follow up with them because for some of these kids, you know, one bad game, one bad shift, a uh, bad penalty, maybe a rela something happened relationally at home or relationally with a girlfriend, um, you know, can throw them off. And so to be able to walk alongside them and, and help them uh, be developed holistically, not just on the ice, but off the ice as well, and to be a part of that process is so wonderful because then we're developing 
um, yeah, young men, student athletes who are prepared for all of life and not just um, professional hockey. Right. And Justin, I'm, you know, part of your journey is, is some of that wrestling with that identity. Like, am I going to be this star hockey player or am I going to be someone, you know, that God's created me to be and, and where that is all, you know, settled out and a few episodes back again, you know, you, you laid out sort of the genesis of Prairie Hockey Academy and for you now to have like such solid people in place like JP and now Kevin to help facilitate these young athletes trying to find their identity and their purpose in life, that, that's got to like yeah. pop a few buttons on your shirt too, knowing that you're, you're doing the right thing right now. Yeah. Well, thanks. I think, you know, yes, I, I think there was a, there was a time in 2000 and uh, I want to say nine or, or where I actually met Kevin around for the first time. We had a chance to work together for a little bit in this, in this moment, uh, you know, learning about some a leadership coach that was working with us and we were looking at some tools and I was like, man, like if I just would have had this as a kid, like I just, I feel like I would have like completely changed my mindset on some things and my trajectory, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just, you know, from ever from that, from that point forward, and that was the genesis of that uh, was like, how do we create, how do we give this opportunity to, to youngsters as, Dave King would have said on the podcast. Um, and, and it's, all, it's been about that. And then, you know, we fast forward to this past summer and I had the opportunity, it was early in the morning, um, 5.30, something like that, six in the morning, I was golfing with Kevin and and I just had a friend that kind of challenged me a little bit about, okay, so you're doing this and you're doing this stuff with culture. and But, you know, what are you doing for your athletes, you know, even spiritually and mentally? And, and um, are you really like mentoring them throughout uh, their days, they walk the hallways and, and different pieces because your head coaches get busy and they they just don't have the time to kind of connect and see that. Uh, and so I, that kind of hit me and I just really felt like, man, like Kevin's the guy. Right. Right. And so, yeah, to be able to see the team that we've, that we've been able to put together now, it's awesome. And then like, as we've continued to unpack on these podcast episodes with different guests, it, it's one thing to kind of put all the together that whole team right um richard talked about that last week it's one it's one thing to have all this it's the next thing is to be intentional now and in using it mm -hmm. and that's um i think that's where you know we started to get some of that rhythm here in our first semester with kevin and, and the team that we've assembled and and we're not perfect at it yet um but we're we're yeah. getting better mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and kevin we've you know right before christmas the 15s had a, a showcase and 17th had a tournament and we've had a lot of chance to have scouts even come by mm -hmm. and spend some time in the scouts room. And I know you've had a chance to kind of rub shoulders with them as well as parents. What is some of the feedback that you're hearing from scouts, maybe general managers of junior teams, uh, maybe agents, um, or even just some parents? What, what are some things that you're hearing from just sort of spending some time, you know, just mm -hmm. some face time in the lobby and, and in the scouts room. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, in, in, in many ways, sport is sport. And so, like, hockey is not that much different than, than a lot of other sports. But uh, I think as you get into high-level sport, the biggest thing you'll see is that th there's not a shortage of talent. There are a lot of talented young people who are all aspiring to make the highest levels. And the difference that teams are looking for uh, that I really appreciated hearing from scouts uh, from pe presidents, from coaches, from managers alike, has been character. Like they're they're looking for for kids, for for young men, young women who are going to represent their team, who are going to represent their community, who they can rely on, who are, who are going to represent their brand. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, like some of our kids have great talent, but the fact that we get to invest in those other things that are sometimes the intangibles that. Absolutely, teams are looking for. You can have all the skill in the world, but if you're an idiot off the ice or even on the ice um, or off the court, off on, on the court, you're, you're not an asset. You're not someone that the teams are, are going to want to bring on board. And so the purposefulness with which we're doing this academy and the holistic nature of the way that we're developing them, um, the types of staff that, that Justin's brought on and, and the team that we have, like that bullpen – is one of the coolest working environments I've experienced. Uh, coaches spurring each other on. They're, they're challenging each other. They're holding each other accountable. They're inspiring each other. They're, they're learning from each other. Mm -hmm. um, but also we're, we're working together and there's a deep care and love for these kids. Right. And that's an awesome thing to be a part of because there's lots of times when I've been doing this kind of work, but 
you know, I feel like I'm on an island or I might be working with some good people, but I may be trying to find the right people. So to be be in this bullpen environment where everyone's on the same page, working towards the same goal, that's special. Yeah. That is something that I have not seen in many places, inside and outside the church even. Right. Uh, so that's very cool to be a part of that and, and to see the impact that it's having on these kids. Yeah. And for our listeners out there, one of the... Um, sort of the, the routine of our week at the academy, um, you know, Monday to Friday, we're on the ice practicing um, for 75 minutes. And it's, you know, everything from skills days, you know, working on shooting, passing, uh, skating, those kind of things um, through to system stuff as we get closer into games and that prep, um, you know, four days a week, we're, we're in the high performance center working out, but that leaves us one day sort of in between of this sort of you know, um, time to invest into that student athlete. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that happens to fall on our Wednesdays. And that's really where this year you've fallen into a groove to help us mm-hmm. really ratchet up, you know, the, the delivery of what's going on on Wednesdays. Can you unpack that for us and, and what the student athletes are going through on that Wednesday leadership class? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, on Wednesdays, we get each team in the classroom for about an hour and, uh, we've got, three main sessions that we rotate through. And then I've been able to bring in some guests as well uh, that just bring in just excellent leadership and experience and, and come from different angles to to, to keep our guys engaged and, and give them something fresh. So the first piece is Humble Strong. So we've got our, our Briarcrest College Athletics Director has uh, this program that's focused really on leadership and character development. So all of the sessions are, are you know, the core elements of like taking responsibility, uh, doing productive things, making tough decisions. And a lot of that actually stems back to stuff that Justin and I took uh, in a previous life um, with another uh, leader. And then the second part is what I'm now facilitating, but J.P. Nurbin, you, you mentioned earlier, had developed a mental strength training. And so that's all about mental health, mental strength, uh, giving these student athletes tools, um, some of which aren't going to work for them whether it be journaling or mindfulness exercises, but we're just trying lots of different things out in the hopes that they find one or two that are their go-tos, that help them to be mentally strong when they're faced with adversity, when they're faced with high stress. And so that one is really practical. And we've got about 10 sessions of the Humble Strong. We have another 10 sessions of the Mental Strength Training. And so I get to facilitate that. And what's awesome is I get to both implement and facilitate JP's um, uh, coursework, but I also get to input a lot of my own experience. And, and I love the fact that that classroom environment isn't just, um, you know, a lecture. It's it's interactive and it's a lot of life sharing. Probably my favorite thing as a pastor, as a coach, as a mentor, and, and now in this role is sharing from my own experience. And one of the biggest things that I tell these guys is I didn't learn a lot from success. Um, success was usually the culmination of a lot of failure and learning from failure, learning, mm-hmm. learning, that, okay, that didn't work. Like, what do I need to do differently? And so to be able to to tell real life stories and real life experiences to these student athletes uh, in the hopes that that helps them to take the content and then see it applied. Um, that is a real joy. And then and then yourself, you, you bring some stuff on the business of hockey and we're preparing these young student athletes for some of the realities that, that a few of them as they rise up the ranks are going to face, whether it be media and sponsorship and different elements like that. And then uh, we have the benefit being under the uh, uh, partnered with the Briarcrest umbrella, uh, the Masters of Leadership and Management. And so we've got a couple members of the uh, leadership team that are with Briarcrest Seminary uh, that we can bring in that just bring uh, just fresh perspective and years of experience in leadership and character development. Um, yeah, just to invest in our guys and, and give them a lots of different ways to to learn these lessons. And then uh, we each week because we're doing it weekly, we get to. I get to watch what's happening on the ice, off the ice. I get to see the results. I, I get to apply some of it directly to what they've just lived and just experienced so that it's, it's, it's not just content they're consuming, but it's actually continually, hopefully, practically applied uh, to what they're experiencing and living. Yeah, it's good, good stuff. And we, on that whole, you know, the business of hockey, mm-hmm. um, we had a really fun event uh, before Christmas break hit. We had... Uh, <laughs> That's right. Our inaugural event, we called it the Toe Dragon Den. And uh, <laughs> basically for the previous, you know, two and a half, so three months. We play were, on Dragon's Den, right? Exactly. The, the Toe yeah, Dragon's yeah, Den. Toe okay. Dragon. So like the toe drag move that I yeah, yeah, yeah. snipe on our goalies and practice all the time with. <laughs> yeah. uh, word played into the, the Dragon's Den. <laughs> but right. um, 
we, we've been teaching the fellows about uh, their brand, mm-hmm. right? And what does their personal brand look like? Like who has God created them to be essentially? And we want them to explore that in, in detail because um, it's important that as they go through and develop as a hockey player, as scouts look at them and, and evaluate them, they want to know about this character that you've, you know, you know, is there character development that's taking place? Mm-hmm. And that speaks back to like their personal brand. And we help them understand then that the junior hockey teams, it's a business, mm-hmm. right? It, it's a meat market. At the end of the day, you know, Western Hockey League franchises are worth north of 10 plus million dollars. And, and, you know, their, their revenues are through the roof and they've got, you know, 20 staff people and their sponsorships that are into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And at any point, if one of those athletes takes a bad step or has a bad character move, it, it's really uh, taking value out of the owner's pocket, right? Mm-hmm. And so m- today, more so than any, uh, junior hockey and pro hockey and pro sports in general, um, the value of an individual's brand. I mean, that's why Shohei is getting $700 million because of his brand, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And so helping these, our young student athletes understand that what their brand is right now is so critical, important to their development. So we had this, we, we you know, we taught them how to, present we we taught we broke them up into 12 groups across the academy we said you are the owner of a junior hockey team you have to come up with a name make one up or you know uh, just steal the the name of the swift current broncos or whoever you want to be and then pretend that us as judges are like we're either an endemic sponsor outside of the industry or we're an endemic sponsor inside like ccm or bow or whoever it might be and and make a pitch to us about what sponsorship is going to look like and it was so cool uh, a month ago now, to sit and watch these 80 student athletes get up there in front of, you know, 100 people and mm-hmm. and lights are on and nervousness <laughs> and trying to talk about, you know, um, this, you know, this sponsor, you know, New Era should give us 150,000 hats <laughs> and we'll put their stickers on our helmet. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and then other ones, you know, they hit it out of the park and, mm-hmm. and uh, we had, well, I thought we had 12 brilliant presentations. These kids start to wrestle with what does this, <laughs> what does this all look like? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it, and it was really captivating. So that's just one small nugget for our listeners out there of some of the things that, that we get. Because I get often, I know Justin, you probably do too, and Kevin, you're starting to hear from parents and whatnot. You know, I had a parent, two parents, you know, a month ago say to me, like, man, I wish you would, like, you guys should talk to kids about agents because agents seem to be bugging us right now. I'm like, oh, interesting, because in our in our, in our business course, uh, hockey, the business of hockey, Back in October, we talked to the kids about all this. Mm-hmm. And the parent was like, oh, really? I need to talk to my son more then mm-hmm. <laughs> about this. So it's relevant stuff that we're, we're helping these young men where the rubber hits the road, the pressures that they're facing in the game of hockey and outside of it. And mm-hmm. so, again, some of the stuff that you're talking about in, in terms of that leadership, there's lots of advice that you can bring to the table from pastoring, from your traveling around the world um, in other sports. You know, in our guide and provide section of the of the podcast, what is some advice you know uh, that you would provide right now to a young player to help them understand maybe what their identity is all about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's a, there's a few things. Like I think you know, guys our age, like there's there's the difference between maybe they, our kids are in identity formation. That's just teenagehood, period. So so they're they're forming a lot of things while we're giving this all to them, and so. Um, uh, trying to help them consider, even in these these really volatile years of formation as teenager and all the other changes that are going on and all the things they're figuring out, um, that their identity is in something stronger than just hockey, stronger than something that is maybe out of their control where, you know, if they don't have the talent or they don't have the work ethic or they don't have the, the right contacts or the right opportunities, like there's only a few that are going to make it all the way. We all know that. And yet, doesn't mean that we don't aspire to reach those levels. Right. Um, but if their identity is is so locked into that, then, you know, the refs are having a bad game while well, they're just wrecked because now the refs are throwing them off or, um, you know, the fans are all booing me or, man, social media is blowing me up. And so their identity just keeps getting rocked because it's tied to something that's that has a lot of things that are out of their control. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as men of faith, like... To be able to introduce them uh, to the impact that faith has on life, to have something that's secure, something that's steadfast, to uh, to introduce them to the person of Jesus, um, 
And, and although we are doing a lot of stuff that's really practical for, for all of life, I do believe that uh, through my own experience, like that, my faith um, has been that rock. And uh, I've been able to share with the guys like some some seasons of real challenge that, you know, for a lot of them, isn't it's going to be tough to land because they just haven't experienced that much of life yet. Mm-hmm. But to be able to give them real life experiences um, and to show them how uh, when your identity is in something other than sport and something that, that has a, a much stronger and, and longer lasting foundation, those moments where adversity hits, stress hits, loss hits, um, you don't just crumble. You have a, you have a strength that, um, yeah, is, is beyond um, the temporalness of sport. And so I love that we get an opportunity to introduce some of these guys um, to faith and, and for those who maybe are coming from a faith background to help them strengthen that, to help them look a little deeper into, like, is this just something that my parents believe and they took me to church and stuff like that? Or is there something deeper there? And, uh, and the beautiful thing is what's really important to me, this was pastorally and now in this role, is I, w- I want them to test the gospel. I want them to test the Bible. I want them to test Jesus like, and see if it works because I believe that it actually does work practically. Like This is the best answer out there. And so to be able to um, engage with them in dialogue, like not just preaching at them, but, but just talking with them. Um, for some of them, they're hearing this for the first time. And so uh, to be able to, to hear their questions and, and to be able to walk with them and then, you know, point them towards where they can find answers and, and, uh, and walk with them as they consider, as they're curious, as they maybe are open to, to things of faith. That's awesome. And yet often we know that those moments will, will happen when they're struggling. <laughs> mm-hmm. it'll, it'll happen when things on the ice aren't going smoothly and the trajectory that I thought I was on is being interrupted and the obstacles that are being put in front of me are starting to really shake me. And so, you know, some of them might start with like, can you, do you have like a mindfulness exercise that we can talk about? Um, or, or they'll want to know like, man, what could I do differently? Like, how do I get out of this funk? Um, and we can talk about real life stuff. And that is an absolute joy. But I do think that, you know, at this point in my life, I'm, I'm closer to the second half than the first half. And so uh, my identity is now more like, what's the legacy I'm leaving behind? What, what's the ripple effect that, that is going to be left with my life? And so, you know, those, those daily interactions and, and making the most of every opportunity, that's what I want to pass on to these guys. So that while they're here in this academy, some of them might only be with us for one year. Are they going to leave this year better young men? Are, are they just going to be better in all aspects, in the classroom, in their, in their home or in their dorm, on the ice, off the ice? Um, is, the, is the legacy that we're leaving on these kids young men who, regardless of where they go, they're going to be the C's and the A's on those future teams because of the type of development that, that we've been able to have on them where they're leaving here character guys, mm-hmm. leaders, people who can handle adversity and stress and have tools so that when others are crumbling and folding, they've got resilience. Right. And uh, man, if we can leave that kind of legacy, uh, that, that's, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with identity formation. And so being able to come at it from the angle of faith, being able to come at it from the angle of just life experience, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> awesome because it's, it's all of life. Yeah. And, and it's, it's every moment and it's making the most of every one that we get. Yeah. And I, I know, you know, as we move on to that next part of the segment of, you know, advice for parents, when mm-hmm. we talk about identity, um, I know as a dad, uh, when my boys were younger and they played, I lived through them mm. <laughs> in their athletic performance. I wanted, you know, my oldest son, when he was playing football and, 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 uh, cycling, I wanted, you know. I saw myself in him and I would try mm. to motivate him. And then when my middle son went cycling hockey and my younger son with football and volleyball, and I was just always like, I was, I was almost, it was, I wanted it more than maybe them at times. Mm. And now as a grandpa <laughs> of a one-year-old, I'm already seeing myself wrestle back with that, you know, <laughs> even me as a, a parent wrestling through with identity, like, oh man, is, are we teaching her the right way and the right way to do things? And the you know, should I be throwing a ball at her so she learns how to catch now as a one-year-old? Like, just, it's insane because you think, well, like, like this, this, these children that we're entrusted with um, have bigger purposes than me living vicariously through them. <laughs> and so, 
Justin, I want to throw it onto your plate. You're your dad. You got some young kids in your home right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that is that hitting in your wheelhouse? Are you are you wrestling with that parent identity? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think we all do, right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, you know, I've my uh, my children are nine, six, and three, and um, they're all just beautiful, incredible kids, um, and. Uh, and sometimes there's there's times where I'm just like, hey, can can you just focus? Can you focus? Can you can you catch? Like we're trying to play catch here right now, right? <laughs> we're, we want to practice, we want to get better, right? So it's, it's some of that. And you know, I had the chance to <clears throat> coach uh, some my daughter's uh, uh, fastball team this this past summer, and and uh, it was it was it was challenging at times in in some in some really good and healthy ways for me because it just you know it it allowed me to to breathe a bit to learn to just have fun and just to really try and practice a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here and being intentional so for me as a dad in that scenario and i remember Sammy Clausen, who's the coach of the Briarcrest College team, um, you know coached us at Prairie Hockey and Dustin Friesen and i was actually the three of us uh, coached this team together and we we went into playoffs and we just had this, this, we weren't changing anything. Yes. It was playoffs of you nine girls fastball. And, um, <laughs> and we, uh, we, we were just keeping things the same. We kind of just had a rotation of pitching. We weren't going to just pitch our, we had a few girls that were very good and we could just run them, but we didn't, we were like, Nope, we're just gonna keep it going as is. And keep, you know, focusing on that, uh, fun, the fun element and playfulness. And this is what you nine girls fastball is about. And, we got, you know, we won the first game of playoffs, won the second game, getting to the third game as a semifinal, and this team's just pitching their stud. That's it. Like, they're no, like, wait a second, they can't even, oh no, they can pitch two innings now because it's playoffs, right? And we, you can kind of see the three of us kind of, you know, a little bit of a twitch on <laughs> your shoulder. It's like, are we supposed to get competitive now? Or, or do That's we just right. keep it, right? And we get into, yeah. we won that game, get to the final, and the same thing. And it was like, anyway. <laughs> It was fascinating. The girls played so good, and uh, they won uh, the whole the whole, and it was, and it was really neat because they all won it together, right? right. And, and uh, but yeah, it, absolutely. There's there's a hundred percent times in that where I was like, man, I wonder if my dad ever felt like this with me, like mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Because I know there's times where I was stubborn or I didn't want to skate or different things. So my three year old right now doesn't want to play hockey anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he's been <laughs> he's just been passionately in love with mini sticks and everything <laughs> hockey. And all of a sudden now he doesn't want to play hockey anymore because he doesn't want to take a slashing penalty. So he'd like <laughs> right. to play football. Yeah. He can hit people and doesn't get penalty. And I said, you know what, bud? Slashing feels really good sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> there's the odd time we're taking a slashing penalty is actually not that bad. Yeah. And uh, you know, you you get a two minute break <laughs> and drink some water. <laughs> But anyway, it all, it all comes and goes, right? They're, they're, like you said, they're in this identity mode. Um, and when they're young, they're, they're trying to figure everything out and it ebbs and flows. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's just, you know, not getting too high with the highs and not getting too low with the lows and just making sure they know they're loved. And I think Ryan Hofer did a really good job of, you know, even communicating that on our podcast mm-hmm. here of like, regardless, regardless if you get playing time, regardless of what your performance is, it does not have anything to do with your value. Right. and your identity and who you are and yeah. what you mean to me, right? Yeah. So, and and he well, talked I, about that, that silver medal hanging around their neck. He's like, I'm not taking this off yeah. because it's, we, we did this as a this team. This is awesome. And, mm-hmm. We're going to celebrate and, this. Uh, and that's a good segue into that next part then with you, Kevin, in terms of from a, a coach's perspective. Like most mm-hmm. coaches out there that, you know, they're, they're our age. They're our listeners' age that, mm-hmm. you know, they've got kids, whether they're playing U9, you know, fastball or, yeah. you know, little tyke soccer or anything in between, um, you've got young kids yourself, mm-hmm. right? And so what is some advice that you'd give to that parent coach that's out there? I don't think today we're talking necessarily about, mm-hmm. you know, advice to some junior coaches out there, but what, what what advice would you give to a parent coach around this whole character development and identity piece? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm 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 in the thick of it because right. I've got twin boys who are 16, and I'm coaching a U18 soccer team, futsal actually, so that's indoor soccer. Uh, I've got a 13 year old daughter, and I've been asked to help coach her basketball team at the elementary middle school, and I've got a nine year old, uh, an eight year old, sorry, playing hockey, and so I'm coaching minor hockey and basketball and futsal, and <laughs> and every kid's different, and and men and women are different. Mm-hmm. And so the expectations at different levels, like um, when I'm coaching young kids, like just remembering this is sport. This is something where you, there's so many things you can learn. 
And so, yeah, it's identity formation, but it's also identity formation within community where you get to learn with how to compete with different personalities and different expectations. And sometimes those expectations are in conflict with each other. Uh, you get to learn how to play with your teammates. You get to develop skills, make mistakes. Um, I, I think for coaches, like especially of young kids, make room for them to make mistakes. Like if, if winning is everything, you're losing so much in their development. And, and I've seen that at, at even like academy levels for, for young kids on the island where these young academies, like I'm talking like seven, eight, you know, six, seven, eight-year-olds where they're going five days a week. And, and at least when they're young, they're, they're stomping the teams that are only practicing two days a week. But consistently, I don't have scientific stats on this, but uh, from the high school coaches consistently, those kids that were part of the two-day weeks had caught up by the time they got to 15, 16. And sometimes the kids that they had been getting beat by when they were young had disappeared. Mm -hmm. They got burnt out. They didn't love sport anymore because it was so much of, it was like their whole life. They weren't able to just take some risk, have some fun, make some mistakes, fail, learn, grow. Uh, so those elements of, of as a parent coach, um, loving those kids, having fun with them, messing around with them, enjoying the wins, but learning from the losses mm -hmm. and, and making sure they know that loss is a part of life. Yeah. And, and it's better to learn those lessons early and, and to, to be able to have levels of risk and levels of loss that are acceptable so that we can grow from them rather than being so overwhelmed when the expectations have been so unrealistic that it just crushes them. Uh, and then, uh, you know, with my, my teenage boys, I'm, I'm getting to see something different where they've had a lot of success, but now they're getting into those higher levels and all of a sudden they're no longer the star. And, and they're having to, to, like, they're having to face some identity stuff. Um, you know, you're male out of the year in your small town and then you go to a bigger school and all of a sudden I'm on the bench and oh, I'm not good enough. Um, <laughs> you know, so those are challenging uh, uh, parts of identity formation. And so then like being able to, to come alongside as a parent and a coach uh, to listen to, and I don't always do it right. <laughs> like sometimes I do want them to wake up and like, you listen, like it's hard work. Like I want, uh, I was a gym rat, so I couldn't get enough of the gym. I couldn't get enough of practice. And, and then sometimes I do wish my kids had that. I think my youngest does, so that's kind of fun. But my older ones, they, they don't have that same desire to be in the gym constantly. So they love sport and they are athletic. Um, but they're, they're, there'll be a limit to how far they go because they just don't necessarily have that, that drive that I did. That's okay. Yeah. Like the fact that they get to, to play sport, to have fun, to be with their friends, to compete, to have success and to have failure, those are great things. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that you can't, you can't compete and you can't um, push the kids to, to, to get better, um, but don't, don't cause them to lose the love of the game in that process right. because you're, you're so focused on um, expectations that possibly have as much to do with your ego and, and, and your need for relevance or yeah. validation than, than they do. Good. Well, our final segment on the show is uh, Grandpa B story time. And uh, Justin, you'd remember this back in the mid 2000s when Edmonton was on that uh, Stanley Cup tear in Calgary, you know, around the same time. And I remember watching TSN and Ryan Rashog was standing, I think it was at the Red Mile and, you know, the Flames maybe had just, they are going to game seven there in, in Tampa Bay. And his final sign-off comment was, uh, sport is a language that's spoken around the world. Hmm. And it's always resonated with me in the fact that it doesn't matter what sport it is, doesn't matter which gender it is, uh, sport is something that unites fans, it unites athletes to, to a rally around a frozen piece of rubber or a soccer ball or football, or baseball, and, and play for the love of the game. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of all that, you get character development. And sometimes it, there's character that gets revealed, and we've seen lots of some, you know, some bad character that gets revealed. But what excites me about the things that we're doing at Prairie Hockey Academy and other places that are, are really putting an emphasis on um, culture and character development, um, I remember at Trinity Western, we're sitting around, we have this big fundraiser, I was, I was kind of alluding to it, um, where Allison Jackson spoke last month at the, the Spartan Foundation event that they raised, you know, each year, three quarters of a million dollars. And uh, I remember being out that event, you know, for 10 years and sitting around a table with all these businessmen that have like 
more money than like they'll ever know what to do with. And you have this conversation, you ask them like, dude, why, why are you here? Like you're, you're, you're dealing, you're, you're giving money to some washed up hockey players and basketball players that are playing college hockey and basketball here in Canada. Why, why are you at the table throwing 10 grand onto it and challenging your buddies to give more? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the one uh, gentleman who became a good friend of mine and is a good friend today. He's like, Barrett, I'm giving this money because I want access to your student athletes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, what do you mean? And he's like, I, when they walk across the stage with their accounting degree or their leadership degree mm -hmm. or their business degree, right. I want to hire those dudes because they've been in the pressure cooker. They know what it's like to train. They know what it's like to work with teammates. They can handle adversity. And I said, oh, you like to you like our athletes because they can manage stress. They, they're, they've got good character. He's like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think it's fascinating. Sometimes we sit back and we wonder why we do a lot of this stuff and why we spend all this extra time and have extra staff like Kevin and JP to work on culture. And I've seen the other end of it. Like I said, at the end of their athletic performance, whether, you know, they go from Timbits hockey all the way to college and they're at the end of their college hockey playing careers. And now really they got the rest of their life to live. Mm -hmm. And it's because of sport has developed, has been a tool to help them develop the character that is now a hot commodity to yeah. all these business people. And I just found that so fascinating. I, And even as we talk to guys about brand in our Wednesday class, I talk about that part of it, that guys, we're all not going to the NHL. Sorry to break your, mm -hmm. your hearts, um, but you better have some really good character cemented into your life right now and know who your identity is and who you're created to be. Because when you're done playing the game competitively, um, you're going to become a commodity and you, you should have a brand that, that mm -hmm. businesses want to hire you. And, uh, and I love that part. I love that that we get to do that here at PHA on a regular basis on the daily. And uh, and these two gentlemen around the table are uh, journeying with me as long as as well as our other staff. And so I just again want to say thanks to Justin for having the vision to keep doing this and mm -hmm. uh, to to you know stick your neck out there a number of years ago. Um, we're excited. We just got our our three year renewal back with you know, to, to keep our license, to keep operating. And, and so there's lots of exciting times ahead. And, and uh, I know, you know, maybe you've got a closing comment that, that you want to add on to that, Justin, but um, it's it's an ex exciting space for us right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. I think seven years in, we're, we're, we're in the second half of year seven, uh, B. And I mean, Kevin's, it's Kevin's first year with us on the, in the academy and we're doing so many cool things. And I, um, I know that uh, we've got a grand vision of how we start to see this walk out with young men and and we're we're just starting to kind of really scratch that surface. And that doesn't mean that in the previous six years before this one that the student athletes that came through didn't get a, a great uh, program. They did. It's just, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've continued to help us mold this and they've been mm -hmm. a part of that and how to shape it and make it better. And, and then those alumni come back and talk all the time with us and, you know, about their experience and we pick their brain about, hey, what, what were the good things? What were the potholes that we can fill in? Mm -hmm. Right? How do we keep making it better? And and so yeah, I'm I'm really excited for the future. But it, yeah. uh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, Kevin, thanks for joining us today. I know even as Justin mentions about some of our alumni that have you know invested well into the program over the years, um, we're already deep. You know this, we have no snow on the ground. <laughs> Um, and, and yet we're already here in the middle of winter, but we're going to be talking about golf season pretty soon That's and right. the golf fundraisers are coming up and some alumni activity and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So any of our alumni that are out there, the parents of alumni, um, stay tuned and keep your ear to the ground because we'll be making some announcements about some really cool stuff coming up this summer and, uh, and that we can, you know, have you involved. We're going to be growing that, that golf event. And, and so that's just a little piece of information we want to teasy with and we'll we'll be talking more about that next week but really want to thank our listeners for joining us today on the episode kevin thanks for joining us and and uh, just speaking to the things that you're doing at the academy and uh, to the rest of our listeners we want to encourage you to keep hitting that like button make sure you hit the subscribe button tell us and uh, tell your friends about the episode and uh you know if you missed something that we've alluded to you know with previous episodes scroll back on spotify and youtube and all the other channels um, there, there's some good, good tools for you to continue being uh, a really good character and, and finding spots of excellence in your life. So Justin, Kevin, thanks for being with us on the show. Thanks for having Benji, me. thanks for all your great work behind the scenes and producing the show. 
And uh, to all of our families, we're excited that you're coming back and you are back and, and we're ready to start the second half of the season. So stay tuned for a wild second half. All the best to you all.